welcome back to our tomato demonstration. If you recall, the last time we spoke, the plants were four weeks old and I had said that everything was fine. We're going to put them to bed and the next time you see me would be when we're ready to do the first harvest. But since then, a few things have happened. The rainy season started, something we've always we've been looking forward to. But unfortunately, it came in such an abundance that there was profuse growth, um, which we don't mind because when that happens, we know how to prune and allow the ventilation to be optimum. We also want to show you that we had an excellent fruit set. The fruits are developing in nice, big, healthy bunches and we are really looking forward to a good crop and i don't know if you can see but every tree has every plant has excellent fruit at the lower levels the fruit bunches have eight or some of them more than eight fruits so still flowering very nicely and i guess the growth in the bed continue to be more profuse than in the pot but if we show you the pots, you'd see that the fruit set in the pots also. So they may have fewer leaves, but they're bunching up quite nicely. Okay, so the main reason we thought we should do another episode to share with you the development is because of that very same event I mentioned, the start of the rainy season. Over a period of seven days, we had more than seven inches of rain. So along with the abundance of rain, which the plants love, the fungus and the bacteria also love high moisture content. And you remember I kept telling you about the late blight, which we were warding off by ensuring good ventilation, good airflow. As I say, inevitable. This is what we did immediately. We saw the first signs. We started pruning. But you know that once you see the first sign, the inoculation, the inoculum is already in the area. And it is highly likely that the plants will continue to be exposed to it. If you see this, you know this is the first sign of light. And on the other side of the bed, I'll show you the best way to prune them off. So as we see this, we do prune them and dispose of them in the proper manner. So all of these stubs you see here would have been all the leaves, not all of them were infected, but to ensure that we had more, we retained the airflow, we judiciously cut off the lower branches, some of which had evidence of the late blight. Late blight also affects the fruit. So this fruit, you could see it's starting to rot. This has no further to go in terms of maturity, so we will be removing that Food. In addition to the late blight, we also monitor for any other problems to, to be able to react to them at an early stage. So far, very few problems. Here is one example of a leaf spot, which given the fact that it's not prevalent, there really is no need to treat for it at this time. Okay, just a quick note on the correct procedures for pruning a diseased, pruning diseased leaves from your plants. Remember, we've already mentioned that you should always sanitize your tools in between your, as you work in your crops, especially if you're dealing with a diseased crop. So here it is, we have our handy sanitizer bottle. We've already cut off, you notice what we're cutting off? With Cutting off those branches that are showing symptoms, those branches, those leaves, symptoms of the late blight. And definitely, as you cut, having sanitized your tool and making sure you're not spreading the disease from one plant to the other, you certainly don't want to spread it onto your compost uh, pile. So what we do here, one of the steps recommended, you, we use solar, solarization to kill the spores in the bag before we dispose of the, any infected leaf, not just late blight, but anything we're doing. If there is a, a, a very persistent weed or anything that has gone to seed, rather than put it on the compost heap, we put it in a bag, a plastic bag, we close the bag and leave it in the full sunlight for at least two weeks. 
the heat build up in here will kill any of the spores and any other problem. Even then, we very rarely put what is left on the compost heap. We have a cull pile that is separate from the food garden. That's it for today. Take care. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends about us, and check out Calix books.